My name is Weldon Darnell Pitts. I am the second out of 11 children for Florence Dolores Scott Griffith. And my sister Flojo, world's fastest woman, she was number seven out of 11 of us. And as Lil Larry asked me earlier, some of the questions and stuff, all I can say is young people, if any young people with determination of wanting to go out there and do something, if you're listening to this, go and do it. Keep your dream alive. Keep your faith in God only, not man, in God only. And keep striding. You'll make it. It may take a while. It may not. But you'll still make it. All right. So I'll give you, I guess, look right here. Okay. Yeah. So who are you? <laughs> I am Weldon. I am the second oldest in the family. And what you want to know? Second oldest in the family, so how many children? There was 11 of us. All right. Second oldest. All right. Out of 11. And um, all of them was interesting coming up. Every last one of them. <laughs> and, uh, okay, tell us about your... Everyone's interesting, so tell us about yourself. What? Myself? Yes. I'm a suave, debonair uh, um, jokester. <laughs> I like to joke around. I like to keep people laughing. I don't like to see people upset. I don't like to see people hurt. Um, I, like to, I like to help as much as I can if I see that help is is you know needed um i worked 30 years driving the uh trans public transportation i started in dallas texas in the 70s and i ended up back out here in la and i finished in uh, 2006. all right let's go back a little bit and your education what schools did you attend i went to um alpine elementary which is out in Little Rock, California. But prior to that, I went to Tibby's, and Tibby's is in Compton. That's where I did my, I guess, from kindergarten to fourth or fifth grade. Then we moved to Little Rock. I went to Alpine, and when we left Little Rock, we came back to LA, and I went to Bunch for a short time, Left Bunch, went to Drew, left Drew, went to Markham, finished at Markham, then went to Jordan, finished at Jordan, then went to Compton Junior College and did a year and a half of it. And I was finished with school. And when you started uh, driving the buses for RTD, mm -hmm. you said you started that in? I started at 80, 81. 81. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so you mentioned Jordan, Jordan High School. Right. All right. And I know Auntie Dee, Dee attended Jordan High School as well. Right. All right. The whole family did. <laughs> the whole family did. Yeah, the whole family went to Jordan. Okay. And you guys were living in the Jordan Downs projects? projects. Right. Okay. And um, so let's talk about uh, Auntie Dee. Dee. Um, because I know I've, I've seen that picture of Auntie Dee, Dee um, wearing the Jordan uh, outfit, mm -hmm. track outfit. Mm -hmm. And um, she was, I guess, in middle school? Or that was high school? That was high school, and she had a Jordan outfit on. Okay. Yeah, she was, she, she's been a runner ever since she was little. But um, I heard that um, they had a football game at Jordan one year, and somebody had snatched the lady's purse. And before the police could catch that person, Dee Dee had caught him. Right. Before he could get away, <laughs> she caught him. I, I wasn't there for it, but I, I heard about it from quite a few numbers, you know, number of people. And um, that's really interesting because, wow. I yeah, did. yeah, she she caught him, uh, caught the person before you know before they got away. 
And um, <laughs> she, she's been running, like I said, she's been running all her life. She started with the Jesse Owens Club in the projects prior to running in, at home in the desert. We had no clubs to run in, we just ran. And she was a runner. Um, she, she was, they had, they, 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 when we was in the projects, there were quite a few young ladies that was running. They were all running, even uh, the, the other sister, uh, Auntie Sissy, she, and she was fast. She was fast. They had quite a few fast girls back then that ran with uh, Auntie Dee Dee, and a couple of them, they were, at that time, they were pretty fast. They were pretty fast. But she's the one that kept pursuing it, pushing it, you know, doing what needed to be done, and she's the one that prevailed. All right, Ong, so you said there are 11 children. Right. And um, name them for us. And the first one is, his name is um, Bobby Jurrell. And then it's me, Weldon. Then it's Vivian, Kathleen, Robert, Elizabeth, Florence, Joseph, Lemuel, Gail, and Eugene. And that's in order? That's in order. All right. Straight in order. Mm -hmm. So, Unc, what do you think about Tiffany Haddish portraying Auntie Dee Dee? I, I, I don't think that's... Me, personally, I have nothing against the young lady. She's a good comedian. She's funny. She's an upcoming uh, good one. Um, but as far as portraying my sister, no. I, I, I just don't see it. I, I, and, and I mean, I, I know I just can't see it. Right. I just don't see it. No. Right. I don't see it. I can, and I have reasons, but you know, I don't know. I don't see it. Right. I don't see it. No. Is there any actress that who you can think of who would be? Uh, yeah, uh, but she's an old actress now. To where she can't play. I mean, she probably can act, but I don't think you know that she fit the part. And that's a um, you gonna say Jasmine guy? Yeah, yeah, Jasmine, Jasmine guy. Yeah. Or better yet, yeah. If they want to do something, we got we got a lot of young people out here that's trying to become stars. You know, and we got a lot of people out here. I've seen a couple of young ladies that looked at pretty close to my sister. You know, as far as looks wise. I mean, here's a little teaching, you know? Give a person a chance. But if you're gonna portray someone, try to get as close as you can to the actuality of them, you know? And I just don't feel as though Miss um, Tiffany would fit that criteria. I don't think so. I agree, you know, because when I first was introduced to this idea, some people, some friends of mine on social media, Instagram and Facebook, um, they they learned that Tiffany Haddish was gonna play Auntie Dee Dee, and so they sent me uh, links, and they said, "What do you think about this? What are your thoughts?" And initially, I thought, "No, because Tiffany Haddish doesn't look like Auntie Dee Dee." Right, right. But you know, Mom said that um, you know Tiffany Haddish had been inspired by Auntie Dee Dee, and she had. Um, put pictures of Auntie Dee Dee up on her walls for inspiration throughout her life. And yeah, and so that alone was was important well, that, as far as a connection between Tiffany and, and Auntie and, Dee Dee. Well, that, that, that's good. And, and, and I know that she's inspired and, and uh, a lot of young ladies out there, you know? I mean, you look at the world of, of track. I mean, every time I see track, I start to get a little weak and stuff, you know what I mean? A little so sober, you know, because I know my sister's the one that changed the face of that, yes. you know? And, and and like I say, I don't have nothing against Tiffany, she's tough. Yes. It's a beautiful thing, you yes. know? But I just don't think, I, I mean, it's just me. Some just tells me that I don't see her fitting that part. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm not taking nothing away from her. If you, you love my sister, that's good. She inspired you, that's good. You know, I, but baby, I don't see you playing <laughs> that part. I just don't. Now let's talk about Auntie Dee Dee's genius. You know, they, you know, 
I've studied and I've learned that there are multiple intelligences. People have different intelligences from, you know, you could be book smart, um, you could be, I guess, musically inclined, um, and then physicality. You know, it, it takes genius to move the body and to, you know, Kobe Bryant, right. Michael Jordan. These are these men are geniuses, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And um, and Auntie Didi's genius with her with regard to her body, right? And mastering her physicality, you know. Um, I remember going with you know Kalisha, you know, very often to the track to uh, watch, watch Didi. Auntie Didi, uh, you know, exercise mm -hmm. and. Um, and her routines and you know her regimen was very strict. So what can you what can you say about uh, what you witnessed and what you knew about Auntie Dini's training regimen? She, I mean, she she tried to do things the right way as far as uh, what what you put in your body. She ate right, you know. Um, some of the food I wouldn't touch, you know. I told her, <laughs> you know, but she would, you know, she ate right. She did her exercise right. She was determined, and I saw that because she used to call me out to race her when she was young. And she, she knew she couldn't beat me, but she would call, constantly call me out because she wanted to race. And we'd get out in the middle of the street and race, you know? And uh, I have a the sister that's right in front of her, Sissy, Auntie Sissy. She'll tell you I raced her one day backwards, and I beat her. And while I was running, telling her to kick, kick, kick. That's what she was doing. She was kicking, mm. you know. But she's, she's, um, she was smart as far as what she knew what to do because after the 84 Olympics, she knew what she had to do. Because I know that the 400 and the 200, those were things that she was running. And I knew that she was running those things. When she ran that 100, I was working. And I had a little TV with me on my bus. Excuse me. I had to stop my bus to make sure to see that again. <laughs> I didn't know nothing about her running no hunter. That was a total shock to me. But that's how determined she was. You know, because she brought that 100 in and look what she did with it. Yeah. And, you know, there's also the the Williams sisters, Venus and Serena Williams, they're 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 genius. Mm -hmm. uh, and now Simone Biles, the uh, gymnast. gymnast. And you know, there are monumental achievements. Right. Well like like your auntie said, and she used to tell people, the youngsters a lot. You don't you don't give up on your dream. You keep going. You know? It's determination. Because it's out there for any and everybody. She it really is. Mad. You may not get the same type of treatment as some of them, uh, but okay. it's out there. It's out there for a person to get, you know, and enjoy. And 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 I look at um, the type of the type of endurance that she did mm -hmm. on her for her body and all. You know, I I I couldn't have done it. Not me, and I and I and I was a runner, but I didn't run in school. I didn't run for anything. I ran from things. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she, uh, um, her, her determination showed me how smart she was because she she never gave up, never. She she constantly strides, strides, strides. And like I say, I didn't know where that one hundred came from. I don't know where it came from. Now, my mom has told me that Auntie Didi was very spiritual. She yes, kept she her was. Bible with her. Yes, yes. We always, we, we would talk and converse as far as over um, the phone. When we see each other, we would always bring God into the family, you know, or into the um, message, because that's how we were taught. Yeah. Every Thursday, we had a powwow. Every week, a different child opened the meeting up with a prayer. And they had to read a scripture from the Bible. When my kids got eight years old, they got their own Bibles. I knew they could read then. Every Thursday night, like clockwork, no phone calls, no people coming to the doors, nobody visiting or anything. And we would sit down 
Uh, she would have us all sit down on the couch and she would sit in a chair and we would start off with singing verses of the church hymns and things. Then we would sit there and uh, say a Bible verse. Each one of us had to learn a Bible verse. And then um, we would say a prayer and then she would go through and tell us the things that we had done during the week that we weren't supposed to have done and let us know what the punishment was going to be. Okay. Huh. That's how we were taught. You know, I mean, we had, we had times to where um, we would have a giant, a big storm out in the Mojave Desert. And when you heard the, the crackling of the, um, the thunder and the lightning, my mom had a, well, our dad had a big chair. And I mean, it was a big chair. And every time that uh, um, the thunder and lightning would come, my mom would tell us, she said, come on, let's go. And we knew what she was talking about. She'd sit in that big chair and all of us that were there at the house. And at that time, it was me, Vivian, Kat, Robert, Sissy, Dee, Dee, Joe, Liam. It was eight of us up in the Mojave Desert area at that time. And we would all get in that chair and we would comfort all around, uh, surround her in that chair, you know? And she'd have the Bible and she'd open up certain scriptures and she'd read to us and she'd let us know certain things about, you know, what's happening in all this. And she, she, she installed God into us at a very young age. I mean young, because I look at where I am now, things that's happened to us and our family and stuff, there's, not, there's nothing but God that is with us, you know? That 90, what is she, 91 years old, I'm getting ready to be 92, you know? She's, she was a smart thing. She was a smart woman. I thank God for her. Why things happen, I know we all have to leave here, but I, I, don't, I don't think she left. She just, you know, she's resting. But her soul is with my mama. It's still in my mom. Because my mom is still strong at 91 years old, driving, doing what she wants to do, go where she wants to go if she wants to, you know. So I, I thank God for it. And I think that a, a lot of, um, with Florence being named after my mom, I think a lot of her went back into my mom. You know? And um, she still lives on. She still lives on. Just like her record lives on. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> you got to beat that first. <laughs> you can be fast, and there's a lot of them out there that's smoking. But until you get that that record, she she is the fastest. She was number seven. Yeah. Of the eleven children. Right. Number seven. That's a very interesting coincidence. Number seven. Numerological. She wasn't. She wasn't lucky. She was blessed. Okay. She was a blessing. You know, and and what what burns me up is how people get out here and they turn things around. Or uh, it's just part of life. How people try to always throw in negative stuff. You know, when they say she was on the drugs and stuff. Well, well however this documentary. The drugs, the drugs meaning steroids. Right. Right. Okay. However this documentary goes or if you listen or if you even if you edit it out whatever i'm the one that did the drugs nobody else in the family did so they <laughs> looked at the big bro and they said no they said no they wasn't doing it because oh, i explained okay. to them okay okay i explained to them yes when i came off or came down yes you don't mess with that yes. leave that alone don't do that yes. no 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 and they all listen okay they all listen she didn't, she didn't mess with anything. In fact, I was going through some problems as far as with my knee and my back, which I still am. Yes. And my sister told me, whatever you do, she said, don't mess with them steroids. Yes. Coming from Compton in the 50s and seeing how it was, I mean, hey, you can, you can holler about prejudice all you want to, you, racism and stuff, you know what's happening. But at the time that I was going to school in Tibby's, it, it wasn't that many blacks. We were surrounded by the whites. We got along with the whites, you know? The fathers, they cut at their grass at a certain day of the week. Kids came out and played while the dads was cutting the grass, you know? And even though we were 
I think we were, uh, my mom said we were the second black family in the, in the conference at the time. Um, going back to Compton when we left, and then still coming up around in the areas, you know, as I was growing up, it, it, it's a lot of potential, a lot of potential in Compton. Mm. A yeah. lot, yeah. you know? It's a lot in all of our neighborhoods, really. Yes. You know? But you have to take advantage of it, you know? Yeah. You have to go out there and get what you want. Yeah. <laughs> We've always had a couple of us that shouldn't be over us, you know? But some of them, they come from under that cover. Yes. And Dee Dee was one of those, yes. you know? In fact, all of us were, because I look back at the families that was in um, Compton and in Watts at the time, coming up, oh, it's a whole bunch of them that's prosperous, doing real well, mm -hmm. very well. Yes. I mean, very well, you know? So you got those that shine and those that don't want to shine, but they're still doing good. Yeah. You know? And, and my thing is, it's a lot of people, especially blacks, there's a lot of blacks out there with potentials. You know? Why they don't use them? When you find out, let me know. But in the meantime, I, I don't know. I don't know why they don't use it or why they don't put it to good use. Their minds, you know? But it's, it's, it's out there for them. It's out there for them. And all those that's, that have it, I'm, like, I'm proud of them. And those that's going after it, I'm proud of you and prouder of them. You know? I mean, it's, it's something that I've, I've, I've always seen us. I've always seen us as a race advancing or always being on top. You hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Them Lakers fans thought they was going to win. Must be crazy. <laughs> Jordan shirt. Let them know. Jordan High School, all the way. Bulldogs. Somebody even bought them a new car from Carvana. No, this is your car here. Right. Yeah. You have a special license plate. Not no more. I have it, but I haven't went to DMV to have it put on. Can we see it? Yeah. What does that say? It's, it's supposed to say Flo's second kid, but our DMV can't pay attention that well. <laughs> so they put Floss KO. <laughs> but it's supposed to say Flo's second kid. Flo's second kid. That's what it's supposed to say. So how, how would that happen? This is supposed to be a two. Flo two kid, okay. Flo second kid. Kid. Okay, flows. But instead, it's flows. Kid. Okay. So you know, at DMV, what can you say? <laughs> they just don't know how to get it right. <laughs>